Hey guys, Soccer from Socky Ticket. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys the first 12 things to do on your brand new and shiny iPhone 12 Pro Max. You wanna make sure that you tweak all these settings to get the best experience, security, and battery life out of your iPhone. So let's dive in and get started right away. So the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna go into your settings, okay? And once you're in your settings, you wanna quickly go into the battery. At the bottom here, you tap on it, and you wanna make sure to click over here and look at this number. The maximum capacity should say 100%. When you buy a brand new phone, the maximum capacity of that phone should always be 100% for the battery. If this number is any lower than 100%, there is a problem with your battery, and that means you want to quickly return that iPhone and get a replacement. Again, even 99% is not acceptable when you're supposed to getting a brand new product. And of course, over the years, this number will go down a little bit, but not by too much. So from a perspective of a brand new phone, even 99% means bad. Okay, so that's the first thing you wanna check. Now, number two thing you wanna do while you're in the same option is make sure the optimized battery charging is in fact enabled. Let me just cancel that, keep it enabled. So basically what's gonna happen is, the iPhone actually optimizes the charging of your battery. So once the battery charging hits 80%, the iPhone is going to throttle the speed of the charging to make sure the charging itself does not damage the actual battery in the long term. So you have a nice and healthy battery for a long, long time. Now I will let you know one thing, when you have this enabled, the overall charging from zero to 100 takes a hit. So the speed of the charging slows down a little bit, but the life of the battery prolongs itself. But if you disable this, let me just disable this for one second here, what's gonna happen is the battery is gonna charge a little bit faster and it's gonna also take a hit in overall battery life, overall longevity. All right, so let's move on and look at other things to do. Now, one more very important thing to set up is if you go into your settings, okay, and if you go into your display, you wanna make sure that you have this race to wake option enabled. Let me show you what exactly it does. So let me disable this. I'm gonna turn off the phone. Now if I grab the phone and lift it, nothing happens, okay? If I wanna just glance at it, nothing happens. But when you have the lift to wake uh, enabled, let me log in here, go to the settings, enable race to wake. Now when I turn off the phone, when I grab it, I wanna glance at it. Do I get any text messages, calls? Nope. I can put it right back. But the good thing is you can lift the weight and it's gonna show you what's happening. If you're not satisfied, you just put it back and move on. All right, so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go back into your settings, okay? You wanna scroll down just a little bit, go into display and brightness. Once you're in here, scroll down just a little bit and make sure auto lock is in fact set to 30 seconds. Now this is gonna make sure you get the maximum battery life per charge. So basically at 30 seconds, if nothing is happening on the screen, nobody's touching the screen, it turns off automatically in 30 seconds. But if you have it at five minutes, four minutes or three minutes, it's just gonna stay on for no reason and it's just going to eat the battery life. As you know, the display is what eats most of your battery. So keep that at 30 seconds. I'm gonna keep it at five minutes just for the sake of this video. Let's move on. Now the next thing you wanna do with iPhones, with iOS 14, you have ability to add widgets onto your screen just like you have on the Android phones. So if I swipe over, as you can see, I have a bunch of widgets. Now, it's very easy to add these to the screen. You press and hold, the whole screen wiggles, you click on plus, and then you have a whole bunch of widgets you can choose from from here for all kinds of applications. Most of these are the built-in widgets. So for example, if I wanted a weather widget, I click on this one and I can choose the various sizes available. So let's say I wanna use this one. Once you're ready, you can click on add or press and hold and just drag and drop it uh, right here, wherever you want it. But these widgets are not gonna be enough for maximum customization. What you also wanna do is you wanna go to the app store, okay? So let me bring up the app store and search for widgets, all right? Let me just uh, right here. And when you do that, you are gonna get access to all these applications 
that allow you to create additional super customized widgets. For example, the widget smith is right here. Look at this. Let me just give you a couple previews. So you can do all kinds of things with your widgets if you download a third party widget maker from the App Store. So don't just rely on the stock stuff. Also go for custom widgets just like this one right here. Okay, now let's move on. Now one more thing I like to tell people to do is if you go into your settings, okay, and if I go into back into my uh, display right over here, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you bolden the text. Now by default, you get this one. Now if this is a little bit light. The actual text is very light, thin. If you want to be able to see better, especially on a larger screen, you want to bolden the text and that's going to give you nice and pronounced blacks so everything is going to be much more easy to see. Now while we are talking about the display, there's a very important feature that you need to deactivate or activate based on your needs. Now by default, it is activated. So what you want to do is go to the settings, scroll down a little bit and go into accessibility. Once you're there, go to display and text size. All the way at the bottom, auto brightness for, for some reason is hidden here and enabled by default. You want to disable this guy so you can control the brightness manually. So if I go over here, I can just control the brightness from here manually. Uh, when the auto brightness is enabled, okay, it is just going to adjust the brightness based on the ambient lighting without your input. Now, if you read this at the bottom, that might have its benefits, but I like manual control. You just have to be on top of the game to make sure you manage your battery life. So if you're looking at your phone in the bed at nighttime, make sure you lower the brightness. You know, that's going to keep your eyes safe and also it's going to get you better battery life. Let's move on. The next thing you want to do is you want to set up certain settings in your face ID. So let me go to my settings. Let's go to the main screen. We have the main screen. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, here's the face ID setting. You click on this one. And then you put your, your uh, passcode in. And then what you want to make sure is when you're in this setting, you want to enable all these options. So the unlock the iPhone, you can use your face ID to make purchases in iTunes or the App Store. You can use your face ID and of course to use Apple Pay and password autofills. That's going to make things very convenient. Now that's number one. Number two things is, which is very important for security, is you want to make sure both these features, attention features, are enabled. This is going to make sure when you're sleeping, somebody cannot bring the phone to your face and unlock the phone with your face. These features are going to make sure that your eyes are open and looking into the camera to make sure it unlocks the phone. So that is definitely a must have for security. So your girlfriend cannot unlock your phone at night and see all those nasty text messages that you send out to other girls. Now, the final thing you want to do here, which is very important. Again, this is going to be for security. If I go all the way down right now, when my phone is locked, anybody can access all these options. Today's view, notification center, control center, all these things listed here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn off the phone. I'm going to double tap to wake it up. Actually, let me just click the button here to wake it up. I can access the control center. I can make modifications here. I can turn on the lights on and off in the house right from the phone, even though the phone is supposed to be locked. People can also access my camera, take a photo from here. As you can see, the camera just launches. So what you want to do is you want to go into your phone, back into the Face ID settings right over here. Let's go back here and you want to disable all these options. So nobody can have access to these options when the phone is actually locked. People can even reply with messages if you don't have this enabled. So now when I turn off the phone and turn it on, I cannot access the control center. I cannot access anything. Okay. As you can see, all you have to do is log in to get full access to all the functions. All right. The next thing you want to do is you want to go to your settings. Uh, you're going to go back into your sounds and haptics. So you go inside here and what you want to do is you want to make sure you disable vibrate on ring. This is actually going to save you some battery. So if somebody's calling you, the phone is going to be ringing. Why do you need the phone to also vibrate if the phone is also ringing? So by disabling the vibration, you're saving battery because the vibrate motor in the phone 
actually uses a lot of battery. So if you get a lot of calls, this is gonna save you some battery. You can have this one enabled. So if the phone is on silent, then it should vibrate so you can feel it because this time you're not hearing anything. Fantastic, let's move on. The next very important thing is you need to enable picture in picture view. So let me go to my settings, okay? Now all you do is you search for PIP, P-I-P on the top, it's gonna bring it right here. Now even if you don't search it, it is under general and it's under picture in picture. Make sure that it's enabled. So let me show you what, it, what that does and how cool it is. So let me launch my Netflix application right over here. Okay, let's uh, pull up a movie. Let me kill the volume real quick so we don't have to uh, hear anything here and get a copyright strike. So let's play this right over here. So there's a movie playing. Now what I can do with picture in picture is if I pull this up, the movie continues playing on a little window here and I can do stuff on my phone as that's happening. Let me just launch an application. So if I want to do a quick calculation, something came to my mind, I can keep doing it as I'm watching the movie, which is great. And also with this guy, you can actually resize it. If this is too small, you can just go like this, make it a little bit bigger, and you can put it to the side. Let's say I want to access the full application, but I don't want to pause the movie. I can just pull it to the side. It'll be right here. I can do my thing here, whatever you want to do, whatever app you're in, and then when I'm done, Go back to my movie if the movie is not that important to watch. Again, you can resize it, make it small, middle, or large, okay? And when you are done, you can exit out or go back to the actual full screen. It's all going to be up to you. Let me X this out. Now let's move on. Now the next thing that's very important is the ability to restrict things on your iPhone. So when you give your iPhone to your friends or family members, they can only do so much on it without causing damage or looking into things you don't want them to look into. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to settings. You have to set this thing up from the very beginning. So you scroll down and where you wanna go is you wanna go into screen time right here. You go inside, the first thing is at the bottom, you have to set up a screen time passcode, which I've already done. Once you do that, you wanna to go to content and privacy restrictions. You click on this guy, and look at all the options on the top here. I can go here, I can now put in my passcode. Now this passcode is not the passcode you use to log into your phone. This is a unique passcode just for this content restriction. So I think mine was 000, okay, something simple, just for demonstration. But I can actually disallow people from installing applications. I can disallow people from de deleting applications or making in-app purchases. So here's one example. I'm gonna go outside. Uh, let me just press and hold on the WhatsApp here. It's gonna, it's gonna give me the option to remove the application. I don't want that. I don't want people removing applications when I just hand them my phone, even if it's by mistake. So you go into the settings, content, iTunes, dump in your passcode, and you say, I don't wanna allow people to delete applications. Now when I try to press and hold, I cannot delete that application, okay? Press and hold, you're not gonna see the delete option anywhere. When I click on edit, uh, there's no X symbol to delete these applications. That's one. Number two, back in the menu, if you go over here, you can also go to allowed applications, and again, disable all these applications so people cannot use them unless you allow them. So if I disable these applications, just take a look at this, the mail, safari, camera, they're all gonna disappear from the actual screen. I don't see the camera anymore, I don't see the mail application, so you have that option as well, okay? So let's go back inside, let me just enable that for now, so we are good to go with that as well. Now under the same settings, I forgot to show you guys, if you go back in here, okay, uh, you have all these options at the bottom, you can take a look at these, and modify it based on your needs, okay? There's so much going on here, it's crazy. Let's move on. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with your control center. You pull this down, and here we have a control center. Now I do wanna let you know, other than this top portion here, the first three rows, it is fully customizable at the bottom. So you go to your settings, okay? And you go into your control center right over here. And from here, these are all the ones that are included and these are the ones you can also add. So let's remove a couple things over here, okay? 
You can also change where you want them. So if you want to use the alarms more than anything else, you can push it to the top so it appears on the top. As you can see, alarm appears on the top here, okay? Now, control center again. So let's remove a bunch of these things real quick just to make it nice and clean, okay? Now look at this, there's nothing there. Now you can add everything as you desire. Now one thing I like to do is I like to add the Apple, Apple remote. If you have an Apple TV, you can use this as a remote to control that. Add the camera, calculator, dark mode, and now look at that. It's much more customized based on how I wanna use it. All right. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I do hope you learned some new things and configurations for your brand new iPhone 12 Pro. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right?